Hallelujah. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Amen. Yes. Um, so, oh, isn't it great to be in the house of God? Isn't it great to be loved, knowing that we're loved by God? Do you know you're loved by God? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, some of you, I hope after today, you will progress on the journey of knowing that you are loved and that uh, God has a purpose for you. Amen. He has a plan for you and that his, uh, oh, his heart is just so goes out to you. Hallelujah. Um, thank you, Jesus. So uh, we, uh, we've started this amazing, amazing, lovely, wonderful series, uh, uh, I Am Statements of Jesus. Uh, and we, uh, Heather did uh, a few w- weeks ago, I'm the bread of life. Then Abby did, I'm the light of the world. And some dude did, I'm the door of the sheep. And uh, last week, Julie did, I'm the good shepherd. And today, you have three for the price of one. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to read to you um, just um, one uh, um, year one teacher uh, collected old, well-known proverbs. She gave each child in her class uh, the first half of the proverb and asked them to come up with the rest. Here some of the replies. Better be safe than punch a year one pupil. Uh, strike while the bug is close. The bug, the bug is close. Uh, you can't, you can lead a horse to water, but how? <laughs> Don't bite the hand that looks dirty. You can't teach an old dog new maths. <laughs> if you lie down with the dogs, you'll stink in the morning. <laughs> Where there is smoke, there is pollution. <laughs> A penny saved is not much. <laughs> Two's company, three's the musketeers. Laugh and the world will, will laugh with you. Cry and you, you have to blow your nose. <laughs> when the blind leads the blind, get out of the way. <laughs> so these are just a few uh, awesome. Okay. Um, so we'll, uh, uh, as Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, let's uh, lo- look in at the context, because o- obviously the context is uh, so important. If, uh, for the benefit of those guys who don't know, the, the chapters have been added into the, you know, they're not what was in the original text. The chapters have been added in the ninth century uh, by uh, monk uh, and priest, and, and in the 11th century they added verses. So the, the monks, I just believe, they followed what already was in the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms is divided by, by the number, and it's easy to find it. You know, it was much harder to find the actual, in the books of the Bible, where, where we're looking for. So they divided it into chapters. But it, it was done prayerfully, uh, and, and uh, awesome. Some, some chapters are definitely, like, divisions are inspired, but some are not helpful. And sometimes it's not helpful because we think it's a different thought starts when it's actually one whole discourse. So this, uh, uh, Jesus was spending time with disciples, the Last Supper, uh, from John 13 to actually uh, when he was arrested in John 18. That, all of that time, it's, it's, it's the longest discourse, private discourse recorded in the Bible, uh, Jesus and his disciples. And so it's one thought that starts in chapter 13 where Jesus tells the disciples, he actually says to them, where I'm going, you can't go now, but you will go there soon. You can't follow at the moment, but you will come be there. And so uh, 
disciples obviously like, where's he going? And they're a bit sad. And, and also, I just, I'm just, uh, Jesus is so amazing. He knows really well what is going to happen. Actually, 14 times he tells disciples that he's going to be handed to the uh, cruel soldiers, that he's going to be, uh, you know, like uh, tortured, right? He's, uh, he's, uh, he's going to be spattered, he's going to be crucified, and he's going to die, and on the third day he will rise. And it's like it just goes over disciples' head. They, they kind of like, they just don't hear it. They, they, Messiah could just cannot die. And, and, and guys, this is also really important because Jesus actually says in one, uh, he says, it's the traditions of men that make the word of God of none effect. So they've been taught that Messiah rules and reigns and establishes the kingdom and, and he is victorious. And, and, and that was so ingrained in them that when Jesus says, I'm going to be, you know, tortured and crucified and die, they're like, no, 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 no. He's talking about someone else. <laughs> Uh, so they don't hear it. And I'm just thinking how often we read the Word of God and because we've been taught some wrong doctrines, we actually don't see wood for the trees. We don't see the scriptures that talk to us about certain things. And, I, I, and we're battling through, you know, with certain people when you talk about especially, especially when we talk about the love of God, the grace of God, the righteousness, we're dressed in righteousness. It's like, some people are, you know, we need to preach to ourselves. <laughs> we need to really allow the Word of God to speak to us. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to enlighten our hearts by the Word of God. And when you come and read the Word of God, don't just read it in your brain, in your own understanding. Because it's a spiritual book and it must be spiritually discerned. Amen. Ask the Holy Spirit always to enlighten your heart. Do you know that Bible is the only book you can read with the author present? You can actually, as you read, you can talk to him about what you're reading. As you read it, you can discuss, you can ask questions. Jesus, how did you feel when this happened? What, what did you experience? Jesus, I don't get this. Could you please explain to me? Holy Spirit, what, what, what did you mean? You know, you can, you can talk to him. And that, that, is, uh, that is your connection with Jesus. And listen, and if what you read doesn't lead you to know the goodness and the love and the power of God, you're not reading it correct. Okay? If you, when you read, all you hear or see is God wagging his finger at you. And if you're reading, uh, just thinking, well, what else I need to find for God to eventually bless me? What else do I need to do for God to, uh, to deserve his goodness? You are not reading it correct. You are reading it from, from a religious standpoint. That is a religious spirit that wants to lead you always astray. And, as, uh, and in the New Testament, uh, ev nearly every apostle was battling with that. You know, helping people to encounter the heart of God. And in these chapters, you will notice, and this is what, just amazing, like Jesus knew what he was going to suffer, uh, what he was going to go through. And yet, his whole concern is about disciples. He's not uh, like, oh, guys, come on. This, he did that only in the Gethsemane when he was so low. And so done, he said, my soul is grieved unto death. Basically, he said, I, I actually can die. So please pray with me. Stay with me. I need you. Listen, the Son of God needed company. Isn't that amazing? The Bible says to us, do not forsake your assembling together. We need each other. <laughs> We need, uh, you know, Ukraine at the moment really needs us. We always have people who, right, who sometimes we go through bad time. We need people to support us. And then a few days later, they need us, to, right? So he, he's actually preparing them and he tells them how to, uh, how to go through this without being crushed. 
And he says to them in chapter 14, he says, do not let your heart be troubled. He basically understands that what uh, the crisis they're going to go through would be the worst crisis of their entire life. Because they placed all their hope on this person who they came to believe that this is the Messiah. This is the Son of God. This is the hope of, the, the hope of Israel. This is the hope of the world. And in their mind, he come to rule and reign. And when to see him crucified and killed, it's like, have we completely, totally missed it? We laid, we put our lives on this, on, on the line for nothing? And, and if this is not the one, what other person can do miracles that Jesus did? What, what, what other person can speak the words? We said, you have the words of life. How can it be? And we as well did uh, cast out devils and heal the sick. What's going on? Did we, were we deceived? Uh, and, and so they would go through really bad few days. Except for few people who actually really listened to Jesus. And really, there's few people in the Bible who really sat at Jesus' feet. One of them was Mary. And, and she, because she just, she just wanted Jesus, she just wanted her beloved, she just wanted this God-man, she was so in love with him. And when everyone was running around thinking, you know, some people have been saying, teacher, she's laying at his feet and she's anointing his feet with the most expensive perfume. That she's, you know, in Israel, people anoint people's head with oil. But the feet, she's basically saying, your feet are higher than anyone's head. Right? And, and, and she's in this, she's totally preoccupied with this God-man. And, and she just sees through the flesh, she sees inside and it's like angels probably is like, man, she's, she, wow, can she see us? She's understanding something that no one else seems to understand. And she anoints Jesus before he's buried. And, and you, you remember women brought spices to anoint Jesus after the burial? You know, they wanted to do the right thing, but they missed it. They couldn't do it. They couldn't do it because... They were not properly listening, right? Still, God obviously loves it. But because this person just was so in love with Jesus, so preoccupied, so in, engrossed with everything he was saying, she didn't miss it. She, she didn't go to the tomb. She's the person who didn't go to the tomb because she knew he was going to rise. <laughs> she already anointed him before, well, when he actually needed it, right? And and uh, was another person was John, uh, and and so was I'm I'm saying here Jesus prepares his disciples, and I, I love how Andrew Womack he actually calls this whole uh, three chapters he calls it Christian survival kit, uh, and I, I really recommend if any of you uh, can find it online it's all free you can listen uh, Christian survival kit. Uh, let, let's uh, let's look at the PowerPoint so we can um, go. From there, so Jesus says, uh, "Yeah, the context is uh, the Last Supper. Judas just left to betray Jesus. Jesus preparing his disciples for the soon death, the resurrection, and he says to them, dear children, uh, where I'm going, you can't go, but you will go there soon.' Uh, okay, so uh, and and you you are not able to follow me now, but you shall follow me afterwards." So then, obviously, disciples are really confused, perplexed, and Jesus starts. In, in, in uh, John 14, he says, it's, it's, it's the next one, uh, Philip. Do not, uh, thank you so much, do not let your heart be troubled. And then he says, believe in God, believe in me. This is as well, this is such a powerful, look, these are Jews. He says, you believe in God, believe in me in exactly the same way how you believe in God. What's that saying? That Jesus is God. Right? 
Jesus is God. He actually tells them in chapter 13, you call me teacher and Lord. That's right, for that I am. He is Lord. He is God. You believe in God, believe in me. And the word believe is not just like, you know, I believe in myself, I believe in, you know, whatever. It's, it's, it's uh, the, the Greek word is to rely, to put all your trust, to confidently trust, to lean on, rely on, so you stake your life on it. This is what this basically, you can stake your life on Jesus. You can absolutely lean and rely on him. And, and uh, he says, then he says in verse 2, in my father's house there are many homes. And I'm going, to, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And I will come back again and take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. Look at this. Uh, again, all these touches, guys, uh, please uh, let Holy Spirit guide you because this is so lovely. This is so loving and so personal. He doesn't say, in my father's camp, there are many tents, right? Uh, or in my father's hotel, there are lots of rooms, uh, you, you know? No, e even this touch, in my father's what? House, which implies, this is my house. And where you constantly see father, and you see me. And, and then, and who is coming? Will I send angel? I will come back again and take you to myself. That where I am, you can be also. Can you hear the heart? Can you feel the, his heartbeat for you? Can you feel this personal touch, the intimacy? You know, we, we read so often the Bible, see so cold. You know, we read, and Jesus said, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And we think that's how Jesus speaks. Right? But feel the emotion. Feel the heart. And, and also, do you know that this is actually... Exactly the Hebrew tradition, the Jewish tradition in those days, a, a, a man would, you know, like lo love a girl, in, let's say she's in another settlement, in another village, and he'll get his dad, and they will go to the parents, and they arrange the marriage, you know, if she likes him, uh, you know, then they organize the marriage, they agree with parents, and, and they are engaged. From that moment, she lights a light in her window, uh, and, and that's a sign she's engaged. And then he goes back home and adjusting to his dad's home, he starts building his own quarters. He starts building his own house, uh, right? And, and he works on it. And sometimes it takes, because he goes to work and then in the evening he comes and works. And the more he works, obviously, the faster he can get his bride. And in the eyes of the world, they're considered mar married, except that they can't live together yet. Uh, that, that's how powerful the engagement is. So then uh, he, he works every day. He doesn't even know when it's ready. But his dad every day goes and examines what he's done. And he says, son, keep working. Son, keep working. And so sometimes it takes two years, even uh, over two years. The son keeps going like, I think I've got everything ready. Dad, what do you mean? Come on, son. Will the bride, won't she want some flowers? <gasps> yes, dad, flowers. Uh, uh, so uh, when he puts all these beautiful finishing final touches, uh, he doesn't even know when, but dad, dad looks and examines and says, okay, you can go and get your bride. And sometimes it can be even in the midnight. All he does, he, his uh, best man is ready always. He just gives a trumpet call, best man comes, and they shoo, go to get their bride. Uh, and then when they approach the village, they blow the trumpet, and they get the bride, and take there, and then seven-day celebration, uh, seven-day wedding. So this is what uh, he says here. I am coming to bring you back to me. You are so precious to me. And the Bible says, as the man rejoices over his bride, that's how God, he says, that's how I rejoice over you. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So, um, also, this fact obviously both comforts them and gives them 
uh, eternal perspective. So, yeah, to have eternal perspective, he says, look, even if you kind of feel everything is lost, remember, this Father's house. You know, there's, he, he's waiting for you. His heart is open. His home is your home. Isn't that amazing? So sometimes, guys, when you go through hard times, when you go through really hard times, and you don't know how it's going to pan out, just think, I'm going to heaven. If this doesn't work out, well, I'm go- well if, if you got really, really sick, and, you know, fear strikes your heart, so first thing, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in, in God. How do you believe in God? You believe God's word. Yeah? And believe what Jesus says. Right? So believe God's word. Believe, believe Jesus is for you. He loves you. And then, and then you can think, but even if, if I don't get healed, well, what worse can happen? Apostle Paul says to me, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Can you hear that word? To die is gain. To people on the earth, it's not a gain. They, yeah, they lose. But to you, it's a gain. So well, you can rejoice looking that I'm going to go and be with Jesus. Hallelujah. What, what is that? You know, we constantly sing about heaven, yeah? And then the doctor tells you you're going there. And you're like, ah, no. <laughs> Something wrong with that belief system, isn't it? So, um, okay. Uh, let's go to next one. Um, hallelujah. Yeah. But can I just add? Yeah, when you obviously, guys, look at that he- looking at heaven, because when we're in this, in a test, we kind of, sometimes we magnify the problem, yeah? We magnify this test, and we kind of, our um, mind al- al- almost forgets. But when you look at heaven, it's like it, it diminishes everything. What, what we sing, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the eyes of in, in the light of his glory and grace. So um, Jesus says, I'm the way. Uh, by the way, notice it doesn't say I am a way. Amen? I am the way. I am the way. So, obviously, uh, many of you probably, you you know this verse by heart. And especially those of you who do speak to people and evangelize, you probably all of you, but listen, all of us need to know this verse by heart. Uh, It's good to put some verses to memory. Amen? Uh, How often did you say, uh, you know, Ah, if I am going bankrupt, or like, ah, there's, this sickness has no hope. But then there is, some, someone say, there is a way. No, there is the way. Yeah. You, you can, all, whatever you're going through, you can always say, oh, but there is the way. Listen, it, this doesn't only apply for your eternal life. You, you understand me? Jesus, Bible says to us that Jesus, God made Jesus to be the wisdom of God for us. How many times, you know, the situation you are stuck in with now or you're going through, if only you had wisdom, you could get out of it. But Bible says to us that God made who? Jesus, the wisdom for us. So when you need the wisdom, what do you do? You come to Jesus. You come to Jesus. And he's your shepherd who will lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He is the way when you stick to when you get close to him. It's not just guys religious like, oh, I believe in Jesus, so I'm on the right way to heaven. Yes and amen, that's true. But as well, in everyday situation, when you stick to Jesus, when you actually fellowship with Jesus, when you abide with him, when you converse with him, you actually sticking on the, way, on the right way. And any uh, 
I actually read one psychologist, I think I took uh, somewhere, one psychologist said, it's funny how people who have integrity in any situation, they seem to find a way out. They always seem to come on top. And, and I like instantly thought, yeah, because people who, people of integrity, people who stick with Jesus, he will always lead you out. Amen. Devil can never over, you know. Uh, so he is the way. Uh, so, so many scriptures, yeah, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have gone our own way. Yeah. So uh, do you remember as well in Proverbs it says, there is a way that seems right to man, but the end of it is death or destruction. Yeah. There is a way that seems right to man. So uh, Acts 14, uh, 4, 12, let's read it together, please. There is salvation in and through no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by and in which we must be saved. Hallelujah. So, uh, and, and the, you know, some people will say, oh, there, is many, there are many ways to God. And, and Buddhism and, and Islam and, and whatever. No. If, listen, Jesus who loves you, Jesus who is God-man, who is the only one who came from heaven, he loves you so much that he tells you there is only one, only one, not a way, the way. So which instantly, guys, takes all of those out, right? Devil, do you remember in chapter 10, John chapter 10, he says, there are many thieves who come, but they all want to steal, kill, and destroy, right? Uh, that's devil's way to distract you, give you a little bit of truth here, so you, you think, but all the religions teach kind of, kind of the same? Well, not, not if you really study them, okay? Uh, to, to actually find your way to Father, to God the Father, to have your way, to walk on the way to God the Father, there's only one. There's no other. It's not, you know, some Eastern meditation. It's not Islam. It's not nothing else. It's only Jesus. Amen. Amen. And if he wasn't that, you know, if he is, Jesus is either really absolutely mad or he is evil, or he, he is who he says he is. Because only mad person, if, you know, if I told you I'm the way, I'm probably, do, if I told you I'm Napoleon, right? Uh, or like in the madhouse, one, one guy says, I, I am Napoleon, and the other says, who told you that? He says, the Lord God Almighty did. And as a voice, I never told you that. <laughs> you know? So, it's uh, like if I told you, if any of us tell you, right? But if he's, if he's not, then he's really evil. You understand? It's like completely misleading people. So, it's either who he says he is, or he's mad, or, or really evil. And obviously, we know Jesus is who he says he is. Amen? Okay, let's go. I'm the, I'm the truth. Uh, Jesus says... Let's read it together, please. Uh, actually, let me just read in the, um, in the verse before. Uh, uh, it's uh, in, Mark chapter, in Mark chapter 4. Jesus tells this. Um, he starts with verse 20. Uh, the ones who hear the word and receive and accept, they bear the fruit. Amen. Hear it again. The ones who hear the word and receive it are the ones who bear the fruit. Can you say it with me, please. The ones who hear the word and receive it are the ones who bear the fruit. Do we want to bear the fruit? Yes. Hear the word and receive it and welcome it. Bear the fruit. Uh, 30, 60, 100 fold return. And then in verse 24, he says this. Let's read this together. It's an amplified. 
Be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth, that is Jesus, the truth you hear will be the measure of goodness and knowledge that comes back to you. So Jesus says, be careful what you hear. Be careful what you hear. Because uh, you, you can hear lots of lots of lots of other things. And l- l- this is why in the, in the Garden of Eden there was a tree of knowledge. Knowledge is something you hear, right? Something you read. And then there was opposite to it was the tree of life, right? So you, you can hear something. You can hear like you, can, you can't teach an old dog new trick. But is that biblical? Are you are learning? Yes. The, some of you are old, right? Yes. But are you still learning? Yes. So always, amen? So you, you be careful what you hear. Because a lot of times we adopt something from a culture and we think this is biblical. You know, a lot of what we come up from a culture is actually not what the Word of God teaches. And then we need, to, we need to take every thought captive, amen? We need to pull down those vain imagination. Very often a cult, culture teaches us stuff that is not biblical at all. Um, so Jesus being the truth, uh, obviously, uh, so as well, I, pour, I always say that, but yeah, godless media. I mean, you can, sometimes you can hear just a little bit of something, but not the whole story. Like, for example, Michael mentioned, how many times you hear on the BBC, here we've got a testimony of God healing someone. How many times you heard that on the ITV news or wherever? You know, you won't hear it, right? They won't take God into perspective. And listen, in exactly the same way, when you don't take God into perspective, you actually are not seeing the whole truth. So, for example, you might say, I'm going through a really hard time. I've got this wrong and this wrong. But if you're not taking God, but God. I love that phrase. In the Bible, it's so many times. But God. But God. You know, God said, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will be with you. So, I, I, I love, you know, for example, there's a, a um, just... Uh, in, in, uh, in um, James, he says, Consider it pure joy, my brethren, every time you fall into different trials. For, he says, this is what happens. Because that will develop your character, your endurance, your patience. Blah, blah. So look, he says, this is, do spiritual maths. When you fall into trial... If you do the mass properly, consider it pure joy. So if you do spirit, the whole, if you, when you see the whole truth, you actually will realize when I fall into trial, the whole truth will tell me, consider it pure joy. Wow. But we look at only the trial and we're like, oh no. Oh, what's going to happen now? Right? And, and it's, it's like... Uh, one guy said, uh, uh, life is not fair. He says, uh, when, uh, he says, I lost my car keys at the ball game and never found them. I lost my sunglasses on the beach and never found them. I lost my socks in the washing machine and never found them. I lost three pounds on the diet. I found them and five more. <laughs> uh, do, so... I distracted myself. <laughs> um, so God said to us, "Do not." Uh, he does not give us spirit of fear, yeah, but but the Holy Spirit who gives power, love, and sound mind. Amen. So also beware of people who will tell you, you know, you have your own personal truth. There is only one truth. Amen. And his name is Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, hallelujah. Also, there is, there is a joy. There is joy. And it's a person. There's a grace. 
and it's a person. There's love that we all seek, and that's a person. There's wisdom we all want, and that's a person. Amen? It's all Jesus. So guys, yeah, the truth, the truth is so important. Because look at, uh, why is, it's, it's, it's those deceptive thoughts that keep us so bound and miserable. Like for example, irrational fears and phobias that as I just read, God does not give us spirit of fear. Stress, anxiety, depression, low mood, confusion, panic, all of those are based on the half-truth you hear. So I was just talking to one young person the other day, and he's having like, a hard time with certain things. And I again pointed out to him, look, uh, you're not seeing the whole truth. This is what's happening. Look in the spirit realm. Look, look, at, look at this. Uh, number one, you, you're, you're complaining about this thing that you're having, this one thing. Uh, and then the second thing of his job. I said, look, are you, are you, is your, your feet healthy? Right? Yes. Your digestion healthy? Yes. Your mom and dad all right? Yes. You, you've got good job? Yes. You, uh, and, and I just, why not? You've got roof over your, over your head? Yes. You've got group of friends and uh, yes. And so, and, and it's like, yes, 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 yes. All of these good things. But there's, uh, I suffer in this area. And, and I've got little challenge at work, right? So you, when you actually focus on that problem, it's like it says in Proverbs 15, 15, all the days of the afflicted, uh, of desponding and afflicted are made evil by what? By anxious thoughts and forebodings. But he who has glad heart has a continual feast. Uh, uh, I, uh, sorry, can I read this to you? Uh, this is from Charles Swindle. He says, The longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. Attitude to me is more important than facts. It is more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than failures, than successes, than what other people think or say or do. It is more important than appearance, giftedness or skill it will make or break a company a church a home the remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace for that day we cannot change a past we cannot change the fact that people will act in a certain way we cannot change the inevitable the only thing we can do is play on the one string we have, and that is our attitude. I am convinced that life is 10% of what happens to me and 90% of how I react to it. And so it is with you. We are in charge of our attitude. The reason I'm saying to you this to you, because your attitude will follow what you set your mind on. If you look at the truth, your attitude will change. If you will speak to yourself the whole truth, listen, Holy Spirit is the witness, He is the spirit of truth, and He witnessed to the truth. He doesn't witness to facts. So when you are sick, Holy Spirit won't come to you and witness to you, did you know you're sick? Did you know that you need to go and see what doctors tell you? He will tell you the truth. Do you know that by the stripes of Jesus you are healed? Amen. So the fact is you might be sick, but the truth is by the stripes of Jesus healing has been provided. Amen? Amen. Right? The, the fact might be you are struggling financially, but the truth is you've got the provider. Amen. And if the Lord is your shepherd, you Amen. will not lack. Amen? Amen? And that's the truth. And the Holy Spirit will testify to you to the truth. And this is why the truth is so important. Amen. Hallelujah. So Jesus is the truth. And let's, uh, guys, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping up. I'm the life. Uh, remember uh, when uh, a few weeks ago I was talking about Jesus says, let's read this, yeah? It will help us all. I am come that you may have and enjoy life 
and have it in abundance till it overflows. Hallelujah. So this is uh, when Jesus gives life. It's not like, you know, a, when you're breathing, you're breathing, right? When you got life, how can you have life in abundance? But he's talking about Zoe life. It is a, it's a God type of life. Zoe means the life of God. The same supernatural eternal life that raised Jesus from the dead. And it's inside of you. Amen. Hallelujah. So God gave every Christian this very life. And, and, and it doesn't start when you die. It actually says, I write to you this that you know. Those of you who believe on the name of the Son of God. That you have everlasting life. Not that you will have once you die. You already have. You already have life. The life of God is inside your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what? I, I want you, just even now, guys, just bubble that life up. And right now, r allow this to be released. And it's released by speaking. You know, he says, uh, the, when we pray in tongues, it's the rivers of living waters that flow in from our belly, from our spirit out. So how does it flow? When we pray, when we speak something, okay? So when you speak with your words, you speak the words of life, you speak the Bible, you speak the truth, you testify, you agree with the Holy Spirit, you testify to the truth, you allow that life to flow out into you. Amen? So how many of you have struggles in your body? How many of you have struggles maybe financially or, or, or relationally or whatever? You know, start speaking out. Start releasing life of God. Zoe, life of God out of your spirit. Amen? So let, let's just practice right now. Okay? So just, just right now, you can close your eyes and, and, and say, I speak life. I speak life to my bones. I speak life to my eyes. I release the life of God that is in my spirit. I release the life of God into my mind. I release the life of God into my brain. I release the life of God into my blood. Hallelujah. In, I release the life of God and I speak life into every organ of my body, into my stomach, into my digestion. In Jesus' name, into your kidneys. I release the life of God into your liver. Hallelujah. Into my heart, I release the life of God. Life. I speak life. Just keep repeating it. I speak life. I speak life. And I release Zoe life of God. Resurrection life that is inside of me. I release the life of God. Hallelujah. I release the life of God into my children. I speak life into my children. I speak Zoe life into my children. Hallelujah. I speak encounters with God into my children. In Jesus' mighty name, I release the life and provision of God into my finances. Hallelujah. I speak life and the wisdom who is Jesus. 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 I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus because Jesus is life. I speak Jesus over my body. I speak Jesus over my finances. I speak Jesus over my children. Hallelujah. I speak Jesus over my home. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Don't you feel life coming? Don't you feel, don't you feel that anointing and power and authority? Hallelujah. 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 This is, that's what Jesus said, yeah? When, when you have faith, you will say to this mountain. Listen, the life of God is released. When, uh, 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 you remember a few weeks ago I told you about the blood being uh, put on the doorpost. In the New Testament, we apply it, 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 they used to apply it by hyssop. And hyssop is, Bible says, is the smallest plant. It, uh, he says it grows on the, on the walls. And the New Testament tells us the smallest part of our body is what? Is a tongue. We apply the blood, we apply it by our tongue. By our tongue. So like my mentor says, you are hung by your tongue. Um, so when you, you know, so speak life of God. Hallelujah. So let's just uh, go to the last one. Uh, in conclusion. Hallelujah. It is is very simple, isn't it? Uh, as as we said, Jesus is God's wisdom. Jesus is our righteousness. Jesus is the way 
for us. Jesus is alive. Amen. So you stick with him. You please, guys, talk to him. He's a person. He's got emotions. He can be grieved. He, he loves. Amen. And he is longing for his children. It's like father is longing for his son and stands at the door every day is waiting. He's longing for you. And when you come to him, Bible says, your prayer is his delight. When you start talking to him, you delight him. You put a smile on his face. Hallelujah. Look, look at yourself. You are God's delight. You are, he's not disappointed with you. All disappointment fell on Jesus. From now on, he's never going to rebuke you or be angry with you. He promises that. In Isaiah 54, hallelujah, he loves you. You're precious. Let's just say it together. Jesus is the way. Jesus is my way. Jesus, you are the truth. Jesus, you are my truth. Jesus, you are the life. Jesus, you are my life. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Shall we pray or shall we already? You? Hallelujah. Michael, come and pray.